I know it. It was quite hot. Stuffy, that's all it was. Oh. What's that? I think that's the stockyards. You want to go back inside? I mean, what we going to do? Ain't no place to go. I know, honey. You don't know anyone else in Chicago. We can't go back to Miss Barnett's. She won't let me receive a general call of that. So, I mean, it's our last night. Hey! Hey, Professor! What you doing out here? Come on in and join the party! Doctor, you still kind of itch yet. Oh, hey, buddy, look, this is our last night before we headed over there. You better load up on some home cooking and some home loving. Thanks. We'll, we'll be in soon. Well, can't you see this little lady is shivering? Everybody know the night out from the stockyards bring on the egg. Come on in here. I'll be all right, really. Doxy, you ain't got no brains of a jumping flea. Can't you see they's in love? They don't want to spend their time with a bunch of gin, swig, and strangers a hooping and a howling. Honey, y'all can have the lawn in my room on the second floor front. Ain't nobody bother you there. And I got a big, fine, brass bed with a real satin cover. Thank you. Uh, but, uh, we, we can't stay too long. We'll be all right here. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, Francis, come on now. Uh, it's pretty licking here. Ain't been drunk yet. Well, ain't been for the lack of trying. Now, honey, I, I know they're wild and all, but, well, maybe that's just because they're city folks and we've never met anybody like that. I wish you could stay with me now. Come home to Henning. We could get married in Nope Church. We will, honey, we will. Simon, why you have to go? It's, well, it's, it's just my patriotic duty. Well, that's what Dr. Du Bois wrote in the, in the crisis. We of the colored race have no ordinary interest in the outcome. German power spells death to the aspirations of Negroes for, for equality, freedom, and democracy. Let us close our ranks. I don't ranks want to hear, Dr. Du Bois. I don't want to hear about patriotism or politics or anything. I just want to hear you say you love me. And you're going to be coming back all right. Honey, please. I, I just don't know. I mean, about being all right. Then lie to me. Tell me lies, Simon, please. I love you. I'm going to come back to you. That's all that matters. I love you. And nothing else matters. Nothing. We love each other. Gun positions are here. 
And here. Now, my orders from Captain Boker are to get to the guns and destroy them. Battalion wants them wiped out before the push. Yes, sir. Sergeant, yes. check the men. All right, sir. Lieutenant. Them crowds got that whole field of fire measured and zeroed in. They could shoot the toenails off a fly in the dark. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Corporal. Headquarters is calling in a creeping barrage from division artillery. That'll keep their heads down. We'll be very well covered. Lieutenant. Listen. Don't say anything? There ain't nothing to listen to. Lord Almighty. They were supposed to be here five minutes ago. Where the hell is artillery? They're probably in the sack. They sure as hell ain't shooting off no 75. Well, Captain Boker made it absolutely clear we have got to destroy those machine guns. What do you think, Hayworth? Lieutenant, I ain't paid the thing. All right. We are going to wait exactly five minutes for covering artillery. And then what? Then we're going to follow the captain's orders.
going to Washington, I said, Dean. And Johnson? Douche hit in the leg, but he'd be all right. Cut up by the wire some, though. Where the hell was that artillery coming? That's what I want to know. Hell, that fool white man probably didn't call no artillery lazy on. Why bother? Nothing out there but a bunch of niggas. That cracker. Corporal? I can't let you talk like that. Captain Boker is your superior officer. Oh, that what he is? Yes, sir. That's all we need in this hole in the ground is a bunch of military courtesy. Yes, sir. Hey, Wood. What are we going to do? You the officer. Yes, but you're an experienced soldier. Now, do you think we can get through that barbed wire? With no artillery cover. We ain't got no wire cutters. And them hiding machine gun with a normal range field of fire. It take a frontal assault at full battalion strength, sir. Yes. I agree with you. I sent you out to carry out my orders, and you just plain failed. Captain, if I had Pay tried attention to... tonight. What am I gonna tell battalion? Patrol the dumb darkies just sat in some damn shell hole, rolled in their big bug eyes. Sir, my men did their duty. Two of them are dead, and one is wounded. The patrol was undermanned, sir. There was no wire shown on my map. We weren't provided with wire cutters. I don't want to hear any of your truth. And there was supposed to be an artillery barrage. What happened to it? They cancel it, or did somebody just forget to call division artillery in the first place? How do I know what went on up in battalion? Something always goes wrong. Well, are you going to find out, sir? Are you going to protest that you almost well, lost an entire Lieutenant, truth? just exactly how far do you think I would get with that? Somebody up there is awful busy covering up his rear. I'm going to cover up mine. Sir, no patrol in the world could have gotten through. Lieutenant, up in battalion, they expect these troops to fail. They know what we are up against. They don't want to hear anything else. They did not fail. And They're nobody gets a promotion by telling higher command what they don't want to hear. Captain, I cannot let my men be held responsible for something you that they had... You stick your thumb in your mouth and you listen to me. They put me in this manure pile. I'm going to get out with my record clean. Dismissed! Sir, I cannot... Dismissed! I thought it was Walker. Anything going on? Uh, no, sir. All quiet. Now, there was an observation two-seater about a half hour ago, crossing the sector left to right. Yes, we saw that. And there was a barn swallow. You mean a bird? Yes, sir. Well, some kind of swift. It's nesting in that... Uh, a dead tree about a hundred yards out. What? <laughs> a bird's nest in this circle of hell. <laughs> what a sight. There's a female sitting on top. <laughs> Hope is that thing with feathers which nestles near the heart. Emily Dickinson, you ever read any of her poems at college? I took ag courses mostly, sir. Well, that's interesting, Haley. You want to be a farmer? I want to teach agriculture at the college level. You really have it all figured out, don't you? You know exactly what you're going to do. I guess so, yes, sir. <sighs> Wish the hell I did. I went through three years at Harvard with a gentleman's C. 
And all I know is the first two lines of a handful of poems and all the verses of Abdul Abul Bul Emir. Yes, sir. You know what's interesting, though, Haley? I've never known a colored person before other than my uncle's butler. There was that chap at Harvard, but none of us ever seemed to um, speak to him. Here we are, living together, for all we know, dying together. And I still don't know a damn thing about any of you. Uh, sir, I'm supposed to uh, keep the sector under constant observation. What? The binoculars, sir. Oh, no, Haley, uh, go on down to the rear dugout. Sergeant Hayward has brought up the chow and the mail is in. Well, you don't have to do that, sir. A walker is supposed to be here. All okay. right, that's all right. Go ahead. I'll take over for a while. Thank you, sir. <laughs> She's back on the nest. Hey, y'all, listen up here. I got something to tell you. Hey! Hey, wake up here. Hey, wake up, will you? Hey, Haley. Hey. You're talking about a big push coming. Now, the Heinz may use gas in this sector. And I want all of y'all to have your gas mask with you at all times. Now, if you got tobacco and rations and that kind of mess in your mask, just get the hell on out. What you talking about, a push? That ain't what them crowds say. What you talking about? That Heinz 2 seed to fly over yesterday, drop a mess of leaflets. Come in real handy, cause we clean out of paper. What's them behind this set? Hello, brave black boys. What are you doing over there, fighting Germans? Why? For democracy? What is democracy? Can you go to a restaurant where white people dine? Don't want to, cause white folks don't know good food. Like this food we eating right here. <laughs> Or can you ride in the South in the same streetcar with white people? Hell no. Now they saying gospel there. Is lynching a lawful process in a democratic country? There is nothing in the game for you but death. Throw your gun away and come over to the German line. It's a good thing you wrote that on thin smooth paper. Then it do be good for something. Simon, what's the matter? Father died. But I heard from my mother. I'm sorry. He, uh... He died on the operating table in that... in that, um... that colored hospital in Memphis. Hey, I'm real sorry, buddy. That's all she says. Your father died on the operating table. That's Yellow Smoke and F Company. Damn! That's gas! Damn! Get the mask on! That's all, too! Well, Haley, get over and tell him about it. He can't see it behind him. It's blowing his way. Hurry up.
outfit are you from? You from the 92nd? Now listen. Uh, do you know anything about uh, Company C? Do you hear anything about Company C? Or the 366th? Do you know if anybody else around here is from uh, 366th? My name is Simon Haley. Simon Haley, what's yours? Oh. What's the matter with you? I'm talking to you. <coughs> what are you doing? I told you to last still, to rest. Oh. What you What, what? Oh. Oh, I understand. No, he is not American. He is Senegalese. A French soldier. An African. He's from Africa? Yes, yes, Africa. He is no Yankee. He doesn't speak French only. It's African language. You're from Africa? My grand job, Latuda. Sorry, buddy. Uh, the folks didn't. <laughs> folks didn't carry on the language. Uh, I guess we could uh, be related, some kind of kin. Uh, we can't say one word to each other. Bahna. Uh, what are we doing in the middle of France, fighting Germans? Oh, uh, no, no, thank you. Jelko. Uh, thank you. I, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm temperance. Jelko. Now, I'll be back for you. Oh, why not? No, thanks, cousin. Uh, to you, to, uh, to Africa, to the end of the war. Sergeant Haywood, this is my buddy Simon Haley. <laughs> Simon, Simon, he just come back from the hospital just in time to go home. <laughs> Wait, <huh? laughs> Deep life, man. Uh, Deep life, man. <laughs> uh, hey, Haywood, look at him. The boy is blushing. That's <laughs> <laughs> you're drunk. You're right. Now I'm gonna stay drunk till I get my papers that gets me out of this man's office. Then y'all know what I'm going to? Don't get drunk again. I'm going to stay right here. Go to Paris, where I can walk up, have me a drink at any bar that I want. Where I can ride a train, where I don't have to worry about no dirty Jim Crow car. And where I can, where I can, where I can mess with a pretty woman. You don't have to worry about some redneck lynching me up to the nearest tree. Hey, Edward, how about you? Why ain't you turn frog with me? No, Doc, I'm too old for them kind of cans on. So what will you do now the war's over? Well, I guess I'll go on back home, take care of my sister and her children in Knoxville, and then I guess I'll just re-enlist for another hitch. You mean you going back to that miserable, low-down, nigger-hating country? That may be, Doc. But it's my miserable, low-down, nigger-hating country. Well, that's all right. Everyone to his own taste, the man said as he kissed the pig. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Simon? 
you college and all that truck. Why don't you go get the pretty gal of yours? Bring over here so you can live the life of Riley, huh? I guess I just want to go home. Anyway, it's going to be different about race. Boy, you is whistling up a hollow tree. Well, it's got to be. There was our division and the 93rd and all the other colored troops. And we fought for our country. They know that. President Wilson has brought Negroes into the government as advisors. That means something. Everything's going to be different. Well, buddy, what you drinking? I want me a shot of that. Kid. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> That's all right. Now, gentlemen, sit down, please. Please, sit down. Oh, madam, it's... I see you, people play. Really, it's, uh... It's, uh <clears throat> Haley, I wanted to see you because... Lieutenant, I... why don't you sit down and have a drink with us? Shut up. Uh, no, 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 Sergeant, that, that's all right. I I think that's a fine idea. Uh, my boy, Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> well, what are we drinking? Anything we can get. Ah, thank you. To my platoon. The best damned fighting men in the AEF. A la victoire. Vive Marianne. Come on, eh? Let me show you how they do the one step on the south side of Chicago. <laughs> idea of what you're going to do. I... I will drink to your homecoming. Thank you, sir. Whereas I will probably spend the next 50 years going to dinner in all the same isolated houses. Tuxedo, Rhinebeck, Hyde Park. But I will have met men that none of them will ever know. I hope I remember. Thank you, Haley. Lieutenant! What are you doing here? I am having a drink with my victorious legion. Will you join us? You crazy, drinking with enlisted men, niggers. You can't sit with them. Why not? I almost died with them. You're drunk. Eddie's. Don't want to get in any trouble now, son. All hell is breaking loose right now. General Bullard up in Second Army has just ordered all colored outfits shipped home first. Oh, how thoughtful of the dear general. The point is, he told Marshal Foch, the French don't know how to keep the blacks in line. <laughs> how about your saute? Now, you listen up good. I'm ordering you to round up all your men. Captain, I'm no longer under your command. Here is my transfer order. The army has assigned me to go to the Sorbonne. To study Rambo, Verlaine, and Balzac. Lieutenant, I gave you an order. Balzac. 
Sergeant! Sir! I want every color soldier out of this town in five minutes! All of you! You are restricted to camp. You will be shipped home first, and you better start to remember how to stay where you belong! Move them out! Time to go home. Like one black eye pee in a bushel. Let's see him. Oh, look at that. Old Black Jack pushing himself. <laughs> that Henry Johnson, he whooped a whole 20 Germans single-handedly. <laughs> This white minister from the First Congregation of Jackson, Mississippi, preached this sermon on uh, racial tolerance, and it made all the papers, and he preached it right here in Tennessee. Even the government then issued out a proclamation against lynching. Baby, I tell you, your salmon coming home to a new world. Afternoon, Will. Congressman. Great sight. Our boys marching home victorious. Yes, sir. Well, Bertha, I expect your young fella will be coming home soon, and then you can settle down and raise yourself a whole parcel of fine little pickaninnies. She's got a Kodak snapshot of a soldier boy in France. Show it to him. I thought I'd... Bertha, I would admire to see it. I have the greatest admiration for our boys in their country service. That's Simon there on the right-hand side, before he got wounded. That's very interesting. That's a fine-looking boy. Well, I think it's about time we should be moving along. It's very nice talking to you. Excuse me. Pick a minute. Make your blood boil. Black Buck standing there with rifle guns and bayonets the government give him. It looks like we're in for interesting times when the boys come home. What are we all going to do when them nigger soldiers get home anyway? How are we going to keep them down on the farm after they've seen Paris? It isn't only the farm. We are going to need a large, cheap, and manageable labor supply. Colored boys coming home with wild ideas about all kinds of things isn't going to help. The mistake, sir, was in taking perfectly amiable Negroes and putting them in the army in the first place. I tell you, we have sown dragon's teeth, sir. Dragon's teeth. I told you them French would spoil our niggers rotten. Everything in the country is unsettled. Where will it all end? Well, gentlemen, I'm reminded of my old father, Colonel Warner. Now, he deplored violence in any form, but there would come a time when he would say of some particular obstreperous darky, it's too bad, but I... Guess that fella deserves whatever's going to happen to him. Well, I do hope the Negroes will be sensible and will settle down without provoking any violence. I'm afraid there have already been violent outbursts of indignation in Longview, Texas, and Lane, Arkansas, up north in Chicago, against Negro soldiers coming home with dangerous ideas. Sorry days for all. Well, gentlemen, if I'm to become senator, I have work to do, if you'll excuse me. Certainly, Andy. 
Andy, I'm going up to Knoxville on Tuesday to remind the blacks they're coming back home. Now, Earl, inside two years, I expect to be junior senator from the state of Tennessee. Now, a national figure and a power in the Democratic Party cannot be mixed up in unexpected, spontaneous outbursts before they happen. Shoot, Andy, I don't care if you're running for dog catcher or senator. When push come to shove, you're gonna haul a nigger, like always. But with dignity, Earl. Always with dignity. Oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe. Though far outnumbered, let us show us brave, and for their thousand blows, deal one death blow. What though before us lies the open grave? Like men, we'll face the murderous, cowardly pack, pressed to the wall, dying, but fighting back. Where did it come from? It's by Claude McKay and the messenger. Ain't that the truth? I done heard of groups of white men strolling through the streets looking for a friendly lynching. And around the corner, bam! Black men fighting back. Bubba, each of those. Simon, more potatoes? Oh, thank you, ma'am. This is just fine. Listen, y'all, I'm sorry I asked y'all to come to Nashville. I thought y'all would come and spend... Now, it ain't your fault them rednecks rampaging all over town. It's a good idea. Chance to meet your sister. Sort of be together for the last time. Ooh. Besides, my train connection is in Knoxville. I would have been here anyway. Well, y'all safe off the streets. This ain't one of your regular lynchings with the town folk looking for one particular nigger. And they got gangs sweeping through the color part of town. They don't care who they get, either, as long as they're black. Yeah, and nowhere is safe, even in Chicago. Papers say 23 colored was killed last month, 16 white, and a thousand families was burned out. Oh, it's the colored, too. I've seen this old white man drive in a Rio, gang of colors, throw rocks through his windshield and drag him out. And that poor old man was all over blood. Well, that's a red summer. That's what they call it. The red summer. Hey, well, maybe we ought to stay in France. Leastways there, we had hand grenades. Well, I got myself a couple of souvenirs around the house here. Maybe you should have stayed in France, Doxy. Maybe we all should have. Tell you the truth, buddy. Sleeping in that old French barn with all that cow manure piled up, I got awful homesick for that sweet smell of them stockyards blowing across Division Street. <laughs> What is it, Tim? They're up the street. Mama told me to run down and tell the folks. There's a whole gang of white men. They're going mad. Thank you, man. Be careful.
Where is clear?